Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to MNW Firing Line, your guide to multiverse nexus wrestling. I'm your host, Jerry Aldini, and with me, as always, is Pete McPherson. Hello. Pete, hang on, I think we have a mic problem. Why is that? Okay, there you sound better. I'm oh, I, I, I was, I, I actually did a low key. Hello. Oh, so that, that, that was may have really thrown. low key. I was like, hey, what's up? Hey. So, all right, and welcome everyone to this episode of uh, Firing Line. A little late tonight. Uh, apparently, the network had to just had to show the wonderful world of poodles, and uh, we got pushed back. I, I can't explain it. I was a fan of feeding myself. Yeah, that's yeah. With that, let's uh, let's do some uh, some checking in. Uh, real quick, uh, thank you to uh, the Human Warlock Three and Seriously Lost for the follows while we were off the air. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, before we get started, uh, anything in the the wider world that uh, you feel needs to be shared this week? Uh, well, uh, we, uh, let's see, we had the, uh, the, the, uh, apparent unveiling of WWE's care packages for, uh, leaving wrestlers, uh, oof. Yeah, oof, big oof. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, apparently it, uh, invo- uh, it, it is in a, a very, uh, high-tech, black, plastic trash bag. Yeah. Yep, that's uh, that's that's one way to so do it. So, for those that are unaware, the uh, the story going around right now is is that um, Mickey James shared a video on Twitter of her uh, receiving the, her belongings from WWE after being let go, and uh, they were uh, sent to her in a box, and in that box was a trash bag with her name on it. Uh, supposedly, uh, Triple H heard about this and fired whoever was involved. I don't know how legitimate that is, but I would believe it from Triple H. I mean, it's Triple he's... H. It kind of, yeah, kind of makes sense. He he he'd do that. So, because he, but he, yeah, he he generally actually tries not to be an asshole to the you know the the wrestlers, even if they're being let go. So yeah. So anyway. yeah, well, like like I said, apparently he he got word of this because it was trending, and he's like, oh no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, not having that why why just but why yeah yeah anyway so with that uh i i suppose there's there's nothing else for it but to get into this week's firing line oh before we get in though oh hey on social media we're hearing from our old friend scott e stevens um well at least from his accounts it says uh, scott e stevens is resting after undergoing minor a minor medical procedure and will not be joining Jerry and Pete on tonight's firing line. Oh, all right. I guess we're not getting we're not getting graced by the gentlemen of M and W this evening. I guess he finally got that boil lanced or something. I, you know what? Don't you know what? We're, we're okay, Pete. We're maybe getting a night off. Don't don't poke the badger. Ah, anyway, so. uh Let's, uh, yeah, no, let's get started. Um, and if anything really hot happens on social media, I'm sure Joe Mojo let us know. Exactly. He's, I'm sure he's, you know, we'll just understand he's probably resting in the next room, as he does sometimes. But meanwhile, uh, let's head into Firing Line, which Firing Line started off this week with the uh, the Luchador DeLuna 13 in the ring. Addressing, uh, basically, uh, directly dress, addressing Jack the Questionable. Jack the Questionable screwed this entire show out of a championship belt because he's a piece of trash. That's right. I said it, Jack. You're a scumbag. But that's not news to anybody. You want to blast me in the face with a chair? You want to help out the Citra King after he disrespected the show? After Tinky came back to help him win that belt, you decide that it's in your best interest to turn your back on the show. You know what? 
Mercenaries never had any loyalty. Maybe I expected too much because I'm friends with guys like the Sandman who are actually halfway decent people. People like Alexis Edmonton who know how to say no to a job. You, you can't even take off the mask that you lost. So I'll tell you what, Jack, you want to get involved in the Bulldogs business you want to get involved in the Citra Kings business. You want to stick your nose where it doesn't belong. Well, I'm more than happy to punch it into your face. Because I've gone to the brass and believe me, the lawyer was none too happy with your actions. And I have been given the opportunity to deal with you personally. And believe me, it is very, very personal. Because here's the other thing, Jack. I understand my record against you is 0-2. Every time I've stepped in the ring with you, I haven't been able to get the job done. But now, now this is a different DeLuna 13 that you're stepping in the ring with. I don't have the outside distractions. I took care of CJR Killer, and I'm letting the brass handle who actually hired them. Right now, my only focus is kicking your ass. So, strong words from DeLuna 13 to Jack the Question. That... I mean, let's face it, that's been brilliant. My biggest surprise is that it's DeLuna going after him, to be honest. I'd have expected it to have been Bulldog. Yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, uh, I think, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of Lucha uh, pride on the line and... No matter what way you try and slice it, Jack the Questionable is doing a direct insult to the entire Lucha culture. I, so, you know what? Not, I, not, not, maybe not the smartest move. Not the smartest move, especially in a, in a Lucha a heavy franchise. I mean, that's, you know, Bulldog already doesn't like him. Uh, DeLuna's calling him out. Somewhere in the background is going to be El Toro, El Zul, and uh, El Pollo de la Morte. Um, uh, there's going to be a long line of Lucha, right? And then somewhere, somewhere out there, one day, Shere Khan. Yeah. Let us not forget Shere Khan. So I, I think the, I, I just, it's a gut feeling I have right now, Pete, that the line to kick Jack the Questionable's ass starts there. That's going to be a uh, pretty big line. Yeah, you've seen yeah. that 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 bit from Airplane with that the the line of the people with all the various sharp objects and blunt objects. Yeah, I like I that. could I could see an entire night, you know, several matches, and half of them are some lucha against Jack the Questionable. So you know, that's a, not a gauntlet match; just each individual match. But with that, let's go ahead and get in. Speaking of actual matches, let's get into our first match of the night. As always, it's a showcase match. Uh, this week, featuring Seth Jackson continuing his investigation into who poisoned Blight Hallis. Uh, and in the match is Aqualung, a Rulian star hand, Lasume 01. The Night Reaper, Zerichus. Joseph Cowman. Brawl Kaiser. And then a, a rarity, The Creation. And uh, yeah, this is... Uh, so yeah, apparently a lot of these people are on, uh, uh, on a suspect list for who might have uh, poisoned Blight. And so Seth, uh, in this match, is there to question people. Ah, aggressive questioning. Very very aggressive questioning, yeah. Oh, damn. He might. Checks out. But, uh, yeah, as it starts out all, you know, right off the bat, uh, interestingly, the, I'm impressed. Aqualung taking out uh, Lasume, of all people. And uh, meanwhile, Seth Jackson and the creation going back and forth. Uh, something about the chicken wings were clearly marked. Uh oh. Yeah, and to which the creation uh, gets Seth in the wheel of pain, and uh, Seth's uh, investigation gets cut uh, short. Oh man. 
So, uh, uh, and that seems to have less to do with the the investigation and more to do with Seth spending a lot of time at that at House Caliban. Good lord! A different kind of investigation. Different kind, of, yeah, different kind of all. Uh, meanwhile, as uh, the match carries on, uh, you have uh, Zerikus taking on uh, now the Brawl Kaiser, while the creation gives a graveyard smash outside of uh, the ring to Aqualung. And if you've ever been on a receiving end of a, something like the Graveyard Smash, I'm not surprised that Aqualung is uh, out for the count and that the creation has his second elimination of the showcase. Mm. So uh, a lot of people were favoring the creation going into this match, but one of the, uh, however, that was something apparently recognized by Cowman and Starhand who uh, teamed up to wear down the creation. Which led to this interesting moment where the creation and uh, Kalman were pinning at the uh, same time. Each only got a two count, uh, but Kalman would have had Zerikus had the ref not counted uh, Starhand first. Uh, and then that uh, that leads us to uh, the next moment where the uh, Night Reaper manages to finally get a pinfall on Brawl Kaiser. But at the same time, uh, Starhand, is, you know, the, the double team work that he and Cowman did on the creation, uh, it looks like it effectively did its job. And the rogue trader managing to get a three count on Christopher Caliban. And then there were three. And then there were three. So that leaves, yeah, Kalman, Zerikus, and Arulian. But the fee one fever dream later. But uh, Arulian decided, nope, I want the pin. My pin. But, uh, yeah, uh, Kalman was like, I no, I don't think so. And then, again, Arulian, really hungry to get that elimination. I think he's looking to reestablish his rep after having uh, managed to get that win on Alexis Edmonton. But this takes us to two, and it's it's Starhand versus Night Reaper. But uh, and that is the Nightmare Neckbreaker, and you know Cowman did a, uh, I mean Starhand did a lot of great work, got a couple of eliminations, but in the end falls to uh, one third of the trio's champions. Uh, which to me, I'm like, okay, Doom is on a roll, and uh, they've they've captured the belts from the uh, the main ro uh, from Warzone, I should say. The main roster is no longer an appropriate term. And there you have it, Night Reaper uh, victorious from, from according to the records for the first time in a showcase. Actually, oh, no, well. I believe so. I can I can double check that. Let me let me check my. Uh, let me go check the board real quick, but I believe that's correct. Uh, it's kind of interesting, actually, going into that match. Uh, you know, the creation, uh, even though he's been in matches, I think he's been in showcases before. If he had a showcase win, it was prior to the records being kept. So he currently has no official uh, win in a showcase match. Uh, but yes, that in fact was Zerikus's first ever showcase win. Oh, well, congratulations so, to Zerikus yeah, then. There you go. So for those of you who keep track of that kind of thing, there you go. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah. The 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 next matchup, uh, this started interesting because uh, speaking of the trios champions, <clears throat> Mad Jack was in the ring when... At first, coming out, not his scheduled opponent, but his old friend, the Cyber Controller. What the heck happened to Cyber Controller? But, uh, and, of course, the Pumpkin King asking, what fresh hell is this? But officials got the controller to go back backstage, and then Zerikus's real opponent showed up. Of course, that being Demolition Fox of AAA. This um, what do you what do you, what do you think of this matchup? This was a 
uh, a different matchup. We haven't seen a lot of Demolition Fox lately, and mostly been against the uh, the Empire when we have seen them. This is true. Also on social I... media, uh, Graven tweeting out, uh, if Jack hates the brand so much, we have no problem punching him a ticket over to Warzone. Fair enough, Graven. That is understandable. Yeah. Yeah, they are. But this this matchup now it's it's a I, a lot of people I think when you look at this there's always this thought of is this mismatched is is Demolition Fox just being fed to Mad Jack. People have to remember the first person to ever defeat Simon the Psycho was Demolition Fox. So uh, I, I, I think the, the fact that we don't see the Fox come solo very often belays the facts that they are, in fact, a, a uh, well-seasoned and talented wrestler. Absolutely. So with this, uh, but on the other hand, as we said, uh, Mad Jack having recently captured the trio's championship along with Michael Macabre and Zarekas, I, at this point, he's looking to make an impact while trios teams throughout the roster are still uh, having matches and essentially vying for the chance to be the first team to take on Doom for the trios belts. And we were saying earlier about lines forming up. Yeah, and, and at least this one is honest competition. Her. and and it's it's kind of an odd setup there there are a couple of teams i would expect to want to be stepping up but we haven't actually seen them much in the competition yet uh of course there is doom's already established rivals are uh, the arcane protection services uh, i would also wonder if we wouldn't see the house of caliban get involved but uh, i think they're all focused on other issues also, the fact that Demolition, we were saying earlier, don't underestimate Demolition Fox. Even though uh, you have, you know, uh, they were in there with a champion. In the end, the member of AAA manages to pull out the victory uh, and uh, make a, a strong statement. Uh, great job by Demo Fox, especially after uh, that recent loss to the, uh, the aforementioned Simon the Psycho. Now, uh, after that match, uh, speaking of champions and the needing of contenders, uh, the next uh, person out in the ring is one half of the trios tag team champions, ladies and gentlemen. It's Spike. That's right. There's still teams, if you can believe it, that have never faced the Bone Warriors for the tag team title. And tonight, your mains event is going to get four of them teams. And guess what, Cartel? I put you on the list. So you ain't got to worry your little hearts no more. It's going to be fun. And maybe if you can actually win one of these opportunities, then you get to fight the Bone Warriors and we can shut y'all up for good. Because I'm getting real sick and tired of hearing about how the cartel got screwed out of this and screwed out of that. If you were so good, you'd overcome the odds like we did. Oh, hey, it's your boy. Ah, Spike. How good to see you. You know, I've noticed an interesting piece of trivia. Both of us won our championships at Multivania. Quite the run of destruction, wouldn't you say, zombie boy? That's right. Although I don't like being lumped in with you that much. You see, one of us actually won our championship without needing any extra help. But that being said, yes, it has been a dominant run. Let me guess. You out here because I forgot to mention your boys. That right, Mon ami? You would indeed be correct. It seems that both Doom and the Bone Warriors have forgotten the most dominant faction that MNW has ever seen. More dominant than the Four Horsemen, than the Faces of Fear, than Faith and the Empire. It's us. 
That may be true. There's just one problem. Y'all don't seem to have a lot of gold to back up that statement. You see where I'm coming from? The Bone Warrior's been having these tag titles. Doom went out and brought the trio's titles home. Didn't, didn't Apex lose to Omega Club? That's probably why you ain't getting no title shots. Your boys don't really live up to the hype. Apex more than lives up to the hype. There is a reason that last week everybody called me out. The leader of that faction. We have dominated since we walked through the doors of MNW. And the Bone Warriors would know that if they ever decided to step in the ring with any of us. Oh, now that right there sounds like it's a challenge. See, we don't have no competitors here tonight. We're going to find that out in the main event. But if you fixin' to get your ass whooped, I tell you what, I'm more than happy to oblige, Mona Me. I can dust off the old gear one more time and show you I'm much more than just Birdie's tag team partner. <laughs> champion versus champion, you're on! Oh, what a shot! A shot with the microphone! Nero trying to take a cheap shot! And here goes Spike! Well, there you have it. So, um... A lot of to unpack in that. First off, of course, Spike telling the cartel that, oh, no, you'll get your crack at it uh, after uh, some um, some protests. Let's, let's say protests from mm -hmm. Victor Vicious. But then Nero coming out, uh, pointing out that he would like to see Apex get the opportunity, which ends up with ten, uh, later in the show, we will be getting a champion versus champion match. Nero Napier taking on Spike. And before we move on, really quick, thank you to Lasumi01 the Robot for gifting a tier one sub to Travis A. Carey. Thank you very much, Lasumi. And uh, on social media, we have, oh, we're getting a, you and I are getting a direct message from oh. Kath Gina. Uh, Jerry, Pete, I like you both. Just know that. Good. I, I'm I think I'm I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. Question uh, mark. Yeah. Good. Good. Good to know. Um, I don't know why. Why? Why is it even when people say nice things to us on social media directly, I I feel vaguely like I like I should be making sure the door is locked. Well, it, it's the uh, the the last. It's that last sentence. It's that last few words. Just know that. Just it, know that. You know, yeah, no, it, it's always the last few words. It's that just. It's yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah. Sounded and, really nice, and then okay, now I'm worried. Yeah, it's like you know, locking the door. Yeah, it sounds great, and then, then doom. <sighs> hey, you know what? Uh, let's go on to the next match. Let's 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 do that. And that next match, uh, actually, speaking of Apex. That next match would feature El Pollo de la Morte, leader of Animals Against Apex, taking on Apex member Zephyr Tail. Uh, this isn't because uh, El Pollo, so the previous week, there was some uh, definite strong words between El Pollo de la Morte and Scott E. Stevens about who is doing the most to fight Apex. And... Uh, uh, one of the upshots of that particular uh, heated exchange is this match of El Pollo taking on one of Apex. That, of course, being the uh, the sunken sea captain himself. Now, there's a there's an interesting thing that's going to happen, uh, and I think it needs to be set up. And that is the fact that uh, uh, part of the reason that Scott is... Uh, so angry at Apex is that Zephyr Tail, the sunken sea captain himself, put Scott's friend Jack Andrews in the hospital in a vicious backstage attack that left uh, Jack comatose for months until he he left the uh, hospital against doctor's orders. And uh, that uh, now we've been seeing him show up in the Flashbang Arena 
Uh, we've heard reports of him showing up in odd spots around the arena, places you wouldn't expect anyone to be. Uh, but in the meantime, you have uh, El Pollo dealing with the, you know, the Apex member. Uh, a chance to show that uh, he is willing to bring the fight to Apex. He is ready to fight the Apex. He's wanting to bring the fight to Apex. Uh, oh, yes, by the way, speaking of Jack Andrews. Uh, I think this is the first really clear look we've got at Jack since uh, he started reappearing in the arena. Now, J Jack's just at ringside. He's he's jawing with uh, Zephyr. And El Pollo decides, you know, it's, uh, to go ahead and remind Zephyr that he's in a wrestling match. And that, well, and, you know, attempts the, uh, the, the most devastating move in all of sports wrestling. That's true. Well, after attempting a small package, El Pollo decides, well, if that's not going to work, then we're going to get some poultry in motion. And uh, and that, uh, that I always feel that poultry in motion, does that look like a modified Pele kick to you? It's definitely well, a kick to the head while doing some kind of acrobatic. Sure. But uh, for his trouble then, the, the, speaking of a truly devastating move, uh, one of I'd say one of the top three submission holds on Flashbang is El Pollo de la Morte's patented cross-face chicken wing. Because that comes, uh, once he slaps that on, uh, you pretty much guarantee the match is over. Absolutely. And then, of course, at the end of the match, uh, Jack Andrews slips into the ring, and El Pollo has some heated words, basically, hey, what the hell were you doing? I don't need your help. And uh, also, thank been, you. as you said earlier, it's been some odd appearances from him, and the, this seems to just be one more. Well, odd appearances, but it's it, it not random. It, it's he's got a focus, and that focus right. is clearly apex. Uh, and particularly, as I said earlier, Zephyr Tail is the specific person who put Stevens or put Andrews in the hospital. So I, I have a feeling there is a, a definite stalking occurring. And really quick, thank you to Lasumi01 the robot for gifting a tier one sub to our own Joe Mojo. Uh, thank you for, for looking out there. Uh, so yeah, I think now the next match, the next match, uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, this definitely was an, a lot of people have been putting Apex on notice. And one of those, are the Omni Slayers of Fate, Jagger Blackthorn and Artemis, who take on Revolos and the Crimson Phoenix. Now, of course, uh, Jagger, I, really the first person in the earliest days of Flashbang to bring the fight to Nero Napier. Back when Apex, honestly, back when Apex was really just Nero and Blight, before they even recruited Zephyr. Right. Uh, oh, before they were right even officially there, Apex. Yeah, of course, as early an in, as early an incarnation as possible. This is true, and, uh, and that's uh, and and I, that rivalry has always simmered in the background, while uh, both parties have gone on to to other foes. Uh, of course, uh, Jagger then found himself. Uh, primarily dealing with the Empire as one of the leaders of fate, and specifically with Simon the Psycho. Uh, whereas Nero, well, Nero went on to become the heavyweight champion and take on just about everyone. With, again, I would say uh, El Pollo de la Morte and Scotty Stevens being much more direct antagonists. So with that uh, continuing, uh, this fight this fight doesn't uh, shouldn't surprise anyone. Omni Slayers have to be trained to take on all forms of beasts, uh, all forms of threats, and so I think a gorilla in body armor is right up their their training. So is a a dapper uh, phoenix bird creature. So that's uh, a. 
nice. with you know, honestly, one's the third I, week of training, the other's the fourth week of training. Yeah, basically, basically. I mean, you've got to start with, you know, beasts, then mythological creatures, and you know, the odd um, abominations and eldritch horrors. I mean, there's there's a lot in Omni Slayer training. You just you, you, well, the, the third week uh, is is you're starting to deal with with animals in, or uh, creatures in armor and. Uh, then you start getting into uh, creatures in dapper outfits. You know, yeah, so I mean, that's that, the process. They are a specific thing. Yeah, that's that's very true. Well, and that's as Omni Slayer uh, indicates. They are uh, monster hunters that don't specify any one type of creature. But in this case, uh, as much hard work and as much training as they put in, uh, Crimson Phoenix was able to secure the victory. Uh, Ravolos decided to uh, that he he had had enough of that beating and just got out of the ring. Now, Fair. while we're on the subject of Jagger Blackthorn, uh, there has been a lot of um, uh, heat between him and Kathgina. Uh, also, specifically after a conversation Kathgina had with Simon the Psycho. Uh, and an accusation of Jagger uh, having spilled Fey blood. Uh, and, uh, of course, the two of them had a match, the uh, issue of which was Kathgina wanting answers. Well, this week, we got those answers from the Omni Slayer himself. So, ladies and gentlemen, your flashbang audio promo of the week Jagger Blackthorn. For weeks, you've been giving me the evil eye, and then you finally challenged me to a fight at Breakdown. Your intention to spill my blood all over the arena. Kathgina, you underestimated me, but what is worse is that you listened to Simon and Wes. You want the truth? You want to know what happened? Then pull up a chair, drop the damn bloodlust for a minute, and listen! Simon is right. I did kill your cousins, Nightfall and Silver. If you had seen the conditions I had found them in, you would have had no choice but to do the same. I put them out of their misery, Kathgina. And it was a very low moment for me. Ever since it happened, I've seen their faces in my dreams. The words, tell Kath I won't be coming home haunting me every night. Yet they looked so relieved when I granted them their last wishes. I realize an apology will never be enough for your cousin's deaths. And let it be known to you and the multiverse that we Omni Slayers aren't the heroes they think we are. So what'll you do, Kathgina? Now that you know the truth, And, of course, what she did was come to the ring demanding to confront the Omni Slayer. Instead, the brass sent out the uh, the beast mom, Naja. Uh, or Naja volunteered to come out. It's it's a little unclear. But uh, the, the end result seems pretty clear. It was an attempt to calm down the, uh, the, bee, uh, the Lady Fae by giving her a resilient target to uh, to fight. The whole time, Kathgina screaming that she didn't want nausea, she wanted Blackthorn. And this gets into a sticky situation, if we're being perfectly honest, Pete. Mm. In that, I, yes, Jagger did kill members of Kathgina's family, but by his telling, it was uh, a mercy killing that uh, it was a situation where it was really the only choice. Now, I don't pretend to understand how uh, how it works in Fae culture, but the, uh, the, the big factor here is that uh, Kathgina seems to not care that there was uh, mercy involved or that there was no hope of saving Midnight and Silver. 
but only that it was Jagger that ended their life. Uh, I would almost hazard to say she would have preferred them left suffering than to have died at the hands of the Omni Slayer. And, and also, again, you know, yeah, I get the idea that, that she now knows the truth. But when it comes from somebody as unsavory as Simon the Psycho, that you uh, clearly this is what Simon wanted. He he wanted he a does target. have Psycho in his name. Does have Psycho in his name, and he you know as as currently Jagger's main nemesis. That does seem that uh, it it does nothing but benefit him to uh, put that uh, that target on Jagger's back. Oh, and we're hearing from Maximilian Thunderthighs. Uh, I think the better question is. Uh, is who uh, out Kathjina's relatives in the state that they wanted mercy? Yeah, that's a good point. How did they get that way? That's a part of the yep. question we don't know. That's wait a minute. Did Pete? Did Travis make a good? Or did uh, did did Max make a good point? Uh, it's fine. He didn't put in character, so it wasn't actually Max. Oh, well, okay. I, hey, I see it. I go. Anyway, uh, either way, uh, at the end of the fight, probably because of the distraction of her rage, um, Lady Catherine is uh, uh, defeated by Naja. But this this story is clearly not over by any sense uh, of the word, and I'm sure we're going to be hearing. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we're if we're following this from now to Multivania. Uh, also, thank you to uh, Inevitable Ruffian for resubscribing for 14 months. Uh, that, you know, we started late, Ruffian. <laughs> that we had, we were postponed for by, by the the wonderful world of poodles. You mm -hmm. know, apparently, mm -hmm. the network has a contract. You, you got to show the wonderful world of poodles every year. Doesn't matter if it pushes back other programming. I mean, who preempts wrestling for a dog show? Anyway, uh, best, best hard not to think. hard look to camera. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Um, so earlier we had been talking about uh, AAA and their taking on of Apex, but as we've also said, Apex has had another person targeting them for quite a while, and that would be the one and only. Scott E. Stevens, the gentleman of M&W, and teaming up with his uh, his friend and compatriot, Apollo Hades, and their target, uh, Labrys and Satyrus, the the Minotaur brothers. That's uh, that I mean, I will I will give them credit. You know, you can love him, you can hate him, but you can never say that Scott backs down from a challenge this is true yeah he 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 will look at the biggest guy in the room and say come here bring it so I'll, i mean he, he will say it in the most condescending way possible but he'll say it yep uh oh and we from we're hearing from the omni geek uh i i really hope i don't get involved my workload is heavy as enough right now as it is that's true, uh, Omni, uh, there, Omni Geek, and you, you even have APS assisting in your investigation. Uh, I, I want to know how that's, that's Good luck. going. Yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll hear something of that here in the near future. Meantime, uh, I, you know what? Apollo Hades has been be an impressive performer since his debut. He has been showing such. Uh, skill, such determination, uh, leading Vaporwave to a lot of impressive matches. Um, you know, a great uh, attempt at the tag titles, uh, taking on all comers. But in the end, I mean, that's a Minotaur. Yeah, that's a Minotaur. That's a Minotaur. I mean, I'll I'll give I, I'll give all the props in the world to anyone. Who's going to get in the ring and face down a Minotaur, especially somebody who goes, "That's the match I want." Uh, and this is right now just Labrys. What he, he, Labrys has at least occasionally lost a match, but as of you know, the when this match took place, 
Satyrus Basilicus still undefeated and not undefeated like Nero is undefeated. Nero has lost matches. Either, either by yeah. count out or being in a tag team where his partner Brian ate the pin. He has just done. never been pinned or submitted. Labrus has never lost a match. Or not Labrus, I'm sorry, Satyrus. Never right. lost a match. Any way, shape, or form. Yeah. No asterisks, nothing. No, just nothing. Yet. But didn't, you know, honestly, notice one thing in this. We didn't really see much in the way of Scott in the match and Satyrus Satyrus was more than happy to let Labrus get the uh, get the glory in this match and I'm not even saying do the heavy lifting we know what we have a good idea what would probably have happened had Satyrus got in the ring but it was he he let Labrus do the work so uh yeah that was just impressive work from the Minotaurs AAA keeping their uh um, not AAA, Apex, uh, ha you know, honestly, if you look at this so far, Apex has had a good night. Uh, thus far, the only loss uh, they had was Zephyr losing to El Pollo, and I'm sure a lot of people will point to the interference of Jack Andrews on that one. Oh, we're getting more from the Omni Geek. Uh, let's say, let's say I got some advice from the good doctor on how to keep Seth focused. You know, if anyone's going to know. Pizza. I mean, it would either be it would either be Dr. Caliban or Mike Davis. I'm sure they use different methods. Mm. The question is this: Which one uses the cattle prod? It the answer might surprise you. Okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, let's go ahead. So um, earlier. In the evening, there had been the confrontation in the ring between Nero Napier and Spike uh, that uh, led to a match being declared between the two of them. And that takes us now to our, our next segment, the champion versus champion match. World heavyweight champion Nero Napier taking on one half of the tag team champions, Spike. And that, yeah, I mean, you look at this, it's like, of course, you've got Nero's reputation of being undefeated. And by that, I mean, not undefeated like Satyrus, but having never been made to submit or having been pinned. But then you've got Spike, one of the most dominant tag competitors in MNW history. As Nero pointed out, at the uh, top of the show, both men winning their championships at Multivania. Also, this is interesting. Uh, while you do have Mizuki and Burden at the side, Burden uh, seemed to be interjecting himself a lot. Burden seems to have some issue with Nero. Now, I would I, seem so. Now, I understand that that if if my um, if my records are correct. Burden is not so much a zombie as a spirit of justice. Huh. But I also think keeping the ref focused on him means that uh, Mizuki gets free reign to do whatever she wants. Um, a lot of people were, uh, to the point of people asking, wait a minute, who threw the chair into the ring? Of course, apparently it was Burden. Many, many finishers traded between both men. You know, you get uh, multiple voodoo splashes, just both men throwing everything they can. There's now there's Mizuki getting up. It just this match, this was really a uh, a bizarre tag match in a lot of ways with their respective partners outside. But either way, and then you know, stomp on the chair. Nero Napier being Nero Napier. And then getting Spike into a coil. Not the first coil of the match, interestingly, but uh, also not not the end of the match. Spike showing great resilience. Here's a question I got to ask for you, Pete. Can you think of the last time somebody gave Nero Napier this much trouble? No. Uh, it, it, 
Not not easily. Yeah, nothing I, comes to mind. I think the the last person that was this much of a thorn in his side was probably um, Henry Colt. Perhaps, but uh, even then, I, I I don't know if it com- how how it will compare to uh, the difficulty he had here. This yeah, uh, I mean even Ginger Boy. I mean there was a lot going on back there, but. Um, <laughs> But, you know, in, in the end, that match involved, well, interference. And this is, I think, one of the more interesting things. When was the last time Nero Napier won a match by a pinfall? Yeah, usually it's that uh, that coil, isn't it? But I think Nero recognized that Spike had figured out how to had that well scouted. And mm. he broke out of it multiple times during the match. So, you know, uh, one thing I'll say about the champ he knows enough that when his strategy is not working, change it up. Oh, and uh, on social media, we're hearing, uh, well, question who, who uh, this is uh, um, uh, from Rosso 06, lore question. Who trained the coil, Mizuki or Nero? Uh, I want to say... I'd, we'd have to go ask her again, but I want to say that one time when we had Mizuki here on firing line, she stated that she was the one that taught Nero the move. Now, their versions of the coil are different. They they apply it differently. But, yeah, my knowledge is, um, although we are hearing, I, I'm, I'm getting from the production truck, that uh, that the person who taught them both the coil was in fact our for our suspended general manager and flashbang co-commentator, hey Mr. Rabbit. So the answer uh, when you're asking the chicken or egg question, the answer was the rabbit. So that's uh. Yeah, yeah, we would have to get them. You know, one of these days, I really still, you know, we were supposed to have Mr. Rabbit on firing line a long time ago. And then the night um, we were supposed to have him on, the show got postponed due to some breaking event. And then when we were rescheduling him, he got suspended. So one day, one day, I still would like to get Mr. Rabbit on the show and uh, get some some on record uh, questions answered by him but uh that that day that day is not today not today not today no what is going to be today is the main event from last friday the tag contender match uh the bone warriors looking for uh new contenders and giving the shot to several teams who have never had a crack at them for the belts and and showing they're willing to take on all comers first off the abyssal void and then uh, Electro Reality, two veterans of Flashbang. Speaking of Flashbang veterans and uh, popular uh, forces of nature, and then keeping his promise to Victor Vicious, two cartel members, the Mad World. So this match, yep, yeah, a lot of teams, none of them having a crack at the tag belts as while well, the Bone Warriors had them. Uh, in fact, of these uh, four teams, I think. Only Big Rock has actually had a title shot of any kind, having uh, won the Monster Mash and earned the right to uh, try to unseat Nero Napier as the champion, now fighting for a chance to unseat the Bone Warriors. So with this... I mean, four teams, hungry as hell. Uh, when this match was going on, who did you like, Pete? Uh, well, I mean, in general, like, you know, we've said before, Big Rock is very good in multi-man scenarios. That's So that, that'd be my first thought. I mean, true, the king of these showcase matches holding four official wins in showcases, a, a record no one has matched yet. Um, 
A lot of people were liking the Abyssal Void just because of how devastating the individual members are. Uh, and interestingly, the nostalgia vote while the show was going on, a lot of people on social media and in watch parties really wanting to see Electro Reality uh, get the opportunity. And then, and, and then, of course, there's Mad World where people acknowledged that they were, in fact, in the match. And with that, though, yeah, it's... As you said, though, you really do have to... Uh, in any of these situations, anytime you see multiple men in the ring and one of them is a big rock with grass hair, yeah, you, you've, got to, you've got to at least put uh, a, a strong odds in the favor of... Big Rock and Huge Mane. One of the things a lot of people pointed out is, and you can kind of see it here, um, at times people were having trouble keeping track of Huge Mane and the uh, the Cleaver uh, because they are their color scheme, their their skin color is very similar, and the fact that they have uh, interestingly textured skin, even though one is bark and one is I don't want to know. And held with withheld upon request right. yeah but actually the the pin while everyone was focusing on huge mane and the cleaver the vr junkie snuck a pin in there and managed to get uh the opportunity for electro reality so there you have it electro reality the nostalgic favorite in that match getting the victory and getting a crack at the Bone Warriors Tag Championships. Um, I, th I mean, this is going to be quite the underdog story when that match actually happens. Yeah, it really will. So, um, well, Pete, uh, hang, hang on a second. I'm getting a note from Phyllis. She's like, pick up the phone. No. All right, I'm picking up the phone, Phyllis. Uh, hello, you're on firing line. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the one member of the trios champions we did not hear from that evening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the bringer of the apocalypse, Michael Macabre. How are you? We're doing good, Michael. You, you're having kind of a... We're having a... I, Michael, I think the apocalypse is affecting the phone line. Wouldn't doubt it. There, that sounds a little clear. Uh, so, uh, Michael, what do you uh, what do you have for us this evening? Honestly, really nothing. I was just being nosy. Oh, well, I mean, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I we're 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 always happy to hear from you. Always, always happy. Um, yeah, you had the night off last Friday. Uh, so I'm. What did you do with your free time? Um, I was in the back with the rest of the guys, oh. watching and paying attention to everyone else. Fair enough. Fair enough, Michael. I mean, that's that's you know, clearly. What did you What did you think of the uh, the matches that uh, Zeracus and Magic had? Congratulations to my brother, Zericus. But when it came to Demolition Fox, it really just showed the true color of the cyber controller. I, I, obviously, that was odd, Michael. I, I agree. The Hey, hey Pete, is it, is it getting colder in here? It's weird. It usually doesn't get cold when just Michael's here. That's because no. it's not just Michael. Uh, ladies and gentlemen... Ladies and gentlemen, the Mad Pumpkin King himself, Mad Jack, uh, welcome. Save your pleasantries, please. Michael, I need a favor from you. It's very, very clear to me that the cyber controller is terrified of me. So I thought maybe he would be more inclined if you dealt with him. Maybe his arm will magically fix himself if you fight him this week. I guarantee this, if that occurs, he won't have an arm. 
after this week. That's what I'm counting on! Oh, and Cyber Controller, I'll be there just to make sure you don't pull any shenanigans. As for our belts, however, I'm looking forward to this whole AAA thing that's brewing. First, El Pollo with a big wind demolition look good. I think we might have challenges sooner rather than later. It does seem a bit exciting, especially with El Toro, El Zul, Sheepy, and Slamphibian picking up their win. Yes, they've been quite impressive. Hmm. But, Jerry, we won't take up any more of your time. But before we go, we'd like to remind everyone of the first commandment of Flashbang. Thou shall not fuck with doom. And on that, Mr. Macabre, if you would, your words. Click doomsday. Toodles. Okay. You know what? Pete, I'm I'm getting. No, I'm beginning to think we shouldn't listen to Phyllis anymore. I well, I'm beginning. I, it, I think I'm getting used to it. Eh. I, I, my 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 blood pressure isn't quite as high as it usually is after that. So, all right, uh, deep breaths. Those breathing exercises have been really, really useful. <sighs> I will not fear fear. Fear is the mind killer. <laughs> right. So instead, it's time for the flashbang moment of the week. But as always, before that, ladies and gentlemen, a word from our sponsor. Firing Line tonight is brought to you by Lacta Tanks. Feel the warm, milky, healing, Jesus powered goodness that is Lacta Tanks. Step inside or be thrown in forcefully by registered Anon after you've gotten the shit beaten out of you by multiple people in one wrestling match. We swear nobody has ever died in a lacta tank. What is the lacta made of in the lacta tank? We have no fucking clue, but we enjoy it anyways, and you will too. Lacta tanks, come feel our warm, creamy, healing Jesus goodness. And it is a single leg drop kick return to sender. Oh, wait, what the hell? What? What? Uh oh, that's not good. Oh my god. That's not good at all. Is that, that is the, the prince? prince? That is the, the prince. The roll up. El Pollo oh, taking advantage. What? what a kick out. El Pollo able to take advantage off the distraction. There you have it, the moment of the week. But but before we move on from flashbang, uh, some eagle-eyed uh, folks in the back had noticed something that had uh, almost became the moment of the week. But it was there was a moment of oddity in the first match of the night. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the moment when we on MNW ask MNWTF. Here is your winner, the Night Reaper. <sighs> yeah, that's it always seems when Night Reaper's in the ring, something. Just just something. Yep. Um yeah, uh, so I don't know, we'll have to ask uh no, I don't know if anyone has checked in on Starhan since that night, but yeah. Could have a Wilson contender there. That's all. Oh, it, no, that was all uh, that was all Caliban. This that one. Yeah, you might want to above game. You might want to wait till the end of the show there. We we I, I I have my own. We might we're not no, done. No, no. Not done. Flashbang is his. He 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 did the thing. All right. So in the meantime, uh let's go I want to check in the next room. Uh Pete, could you open could you open the door there? Thanks. Thanks. Hello. Hey, how's it going, guys? And <laughs> what I and there it is. So Joe, how uh, how's it going tonight? Uh, pretty well. I actually had a decent night's sleep. I was up and awake. Nothing really disturbed me. So, hey. Really? 
Well, con- congratulations. Uh, the uh, yeah. So this week, uh, the call out. Uh, you got a, you got a get this week, didn't you? Yeah. So I should I should mention this um, ahead of time before uh, uh, someone yells at me. So this this particular episode of the call out was booked a month in advance, um, and I w- this would have happened. The episode itself would have t- taken place like a few weeks ago, but uh let's just say i needed i needed a break because uh the brain was doing the fucky wuckies and then uh the 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 week after tiki came back and i'm like i gotta get tiki in right and then you know zerikas was like hey can i do one and i'm like oh fuck yeah dude and then of course there was the portal uh the portal was before was uh before tiki yeah so that's just you know stuff happens all right well ladies and gentlemen yep do you want to do you want to lead us in joe this man is definitely one of the oldest sta- one of the oldest names that we have here in MNW, a former champion itself. But I'm not going to let myself, my my present self, uh, spoil it for you. Let's just let's just uh, give it on to the uh, past me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the call out with Joe Mojo. Thank you, Firing Line, and welcome back to the call out, my name is Joe. My next guest is one of the oldest talent that we have here in MNW. He is a former tag team champion and Warpgate hardcore champion. He is the Dagger, Daggerick. Daggerick, thank you for joining us tonight. Right, right, Manling. Seems like people want to hear things from me. So here I am. You are one of the more seasoned members of the Warzone roster. Former tag team champion and Warpgate hardcore champion. Newer fans have to hear about you. For those newer fans, what can you tell us about yourself? Three-time former tag champion. But that was way back. And something about myself, huh? Well, I do come from the kingdom of my people deep beneath the mountains. And I'm still a member of the royal family. So why am I here, fighting in a ring, with all kinds of weirdos? To show that I'm the toughest son of a bitch in this damn company. And to settle some debts that still have to be paid. So I guess one thing that the new fans should know, that I'll never forget a grudge. And always, always, fight back when you slot me. Might take years, but my Khan doesn't forget. Can you elaborate on being royalty? Are you in line for a crown, or is this like a distant relation kind of deal? I'm the firstborn son of my father, so yeah, I'm next in line. But my father has at least another century in him, so that won't happen anytime soon. And no war is on the horizon, so no reason to think otherwise. It has no impact on my wrestling career, if that's what you want to know. That is amazing. I mean, personally, I never knew about your lineage. So, how does a dwarven prince end up in our corner of the multiverse? How? Simple. Leave his clan for a while to prove himself and temper himself in the outside world. And in the early days, there was this little thing show called Lucha Underground. It seemed like the place to go to test your skill against all kinds of fighters. And here we are today. Different name, same deal. Ah, uh, yeah, before MNW got its name and before Grimm killed that part of the multiverse. What was it like during those early days? Simpler, smaller, no factions, no fights between promotions. Just go there, beat the sh out of each other. And if you do it well, you might walk out with a gold around your belt. That's how me and Flyboy did it back in the heyday. We just fought to see who is the best. Simple as that. Before teaming with his brother Strongman Bell, you and Flyboy Bell did have a very successful tag team called Rhythm and Blues. How did you two come together? (laughs) It was a kind of accident. There was a lot of experimenting at the time. Tag team division was getting off the ground for there was not many people yet. We showed up around the same time and shortly after our respected debuts, we were thrown together for a match. Young Bell has a heart of a fighter and spirit to boot, so we gave it a go. And it worked well. We were great together. Capturing the tag team titles three times, like you mentioned previously, some argue that Flyboy still has some, well, let's just say habits that he has picked up from those days. Mostly about how he keeps targeting the biggest guy in any match he is in. Oi! Every guy in that ring is taller than me. That's just a fact. And if he decided to follow me on that, that just shows that the kid has heart. It's not a scare to show of it. I respect that about him. If someone, thing... That's a problem. 
Who cares? So, what I have next on my list of questions here is going to be a bit rough, just letting you know, because we are going to be talking about the Inquisition, if you don't mind. I got stabbed in the back, that's what happened. But fun! Ask your questions. Yeah, when the Inquisition took authority, they issued out bounties for title shots, and you were one of the first names on that list. Why did the Inquisition want you in jail? Who the f*** knows? They made it some bullshit reason that I broke their laws despite me being under laws of my people. Or I was just too big of a problem for them. And trust me, there are grudges to settle that came from that. We will get to those names here in just a moment. Having spent the longest time in the Inquisition prison, uh, the Inquisition was driven away. You came back and some say that you had a more of an aggressive side to you, calling yourself the Dagger Daggerick. What was it like? What do you think it was, Manling? Unicorns and rainbows? It was a freaking prison. Dark, damp, and terrible company most of the time. And the food was terrible. And yes, I was locked up in there basically since the start to finish. I know that Flyboy and his brother tried to get me out. But I still had to watch people getting in and out. All the time. And you expect me to leave the place as the same man that went in? You should try it yourself, and then you'll know what it's like. I didn't really know if their jails were any harsher, if I'm being completely honest. But after you came back, you started hunting the man who put you in prison. Since then, have you been able to cross Louis McDonald off of your list? He is still running around all smug and chasing titles, isn't he? So no, until I beat the absolute f***ing shit out of him and break, well, at least some of his bones, then no, he is not off the list. But he seems to have a knack for running away, hiding behind factions and meat shields. But I'm patient, and I will live longer than him. As I said, we dwarves don't forget. Damas Kron, the great book of grudges as you know it, doesn't make you forget. I mean, if it helps, his ratio from title shots to actual title wins is very low. He can't even seem to keep one past his first defense. This is not even about the belts. Grudge is grudge. It goes past that. Until I deal with him myself, it's not satisfied. How about your legendary match with Exar Kun? Crossing the Sith Lord off your list after a grueling 40 minutes is no easy feat. I mean, that match even got nominated for a Nexi this past year. I don't need awards for that, but I admit, I am glad that people recognize what we put ourselves through. I respect Exar, even when he never beat me one-on-one -on -one and still became the world champion. He's a tough son of a bitch, despite his endless talk about breaking of chains and stuff like that. It's annoying, but in the ring, he is the best opponent I had. And best match since I came here. Ever since the case versus mask match between that one schmuck and Louis McDonald, you seem to be hanging around with schmuck and Pupusa PI more and more. How did that all come about? With schmuck, it comes to having issues with same people. Enemy on my enemy and all that. And despite our mm, differences, he can fight. And the detective man, lately I don't have much to do. All these matters these days are factions and brand warfare and all that junk. I'm not cut for politics like that, so working with Papusa lets me still fight, keeps me from boredom. In Warzone, being in a faction nowadays seems to have taken hold. Have you three thought about forming a faction? Or how about even a trio to go for the trio's titles? I didn't. You know what, I never joined a faction or another tag team after the Inquisition. I wanted to prove myself on my own merit, and my own skill, and I don't trust people much. But that didn't get me far lately, did it? Dagrick? You are a one-of-a-kind talent that we have here on Warzone. Your sheer resiliency and stubbornness to fall is nothing short of impressive. You've bowed the likes of Gorm, Jungos, Notorious CAT to name a few, came out bloodied and parts of them broken, regardless of a win or loss. You have carved a path of shattered bones just on your own. There is something to be said about that at the very least. That might be my legacy, yes, and it's a good one. For someone that retired, I am proud of what I did, but I am not done. I still have more in me, but it's getting harder and harder to stay relevant. Everyone is hungry for success, and there are newbies with the same hunger coming in all the time. What matters now 
what kind of future will I have? Hopefully, a future covered in gold. But we are reaching our time with all of this being said and done as we are winding down here. Is there anything that you would like to tell the Firing Line audience? The long-time viewers now know what I'm about. But for you, the new ones, the ones that don't know who the hell I am, you better watch closely. Because this dwarf hasn't said his last words yet. You can't put me away for good. I will always be back. I would like to thank my guests for joining us, and if you would like to see Dagger cross the name off the Book of Grudges, please tune in to twitch.tv slash Takahata101 for MNW Warzone, Saturdays at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. This has been Joe, signing out. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Mojo interviewing Daggerick. Good job there, Joe. Thank you. Um, I've been trying to get my main goal for like at least with the Warzone people is to kind of uh, get the their older like feuds and older stories like known to the newer audience because like um, cause could, like there are people nowadays who don't even know the Inquisition was even a thing back then, and that's when I came in. Was like during like the very beginning of that whole arc. Yeah, fair enough. I just in my mind that means oh god that. So when are when are you interviewing Grizzly Adams? I could give you a straight answer on that one, but i i will re, i I will say I will say maybe in the future. Well, fair maybe. enough. All right. Never well, say never in wrestling. Yeah. Notice I said Grizzly Adams, not Doctor Grimm. I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. He he he's uh, came up a couple of times in um, the in the uh, talks I had with Brad and myself, going back and forth. Like, okay, who should we get next? Who should we get next? There will be another Warzone person for next week, though. Okay. Well, well, Warzone was off the uh, you know off the air for a couple weeks. So that's fair. Let's let's give him some some warm up. Well, also the guest, this guest actually came to me this time, um, and. Yeah, we, and this and this was the slot that was available. Fair enough. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Joe Mojo and Joe. We'll uh, we'll talk to you later. See you. And now let's move on to well, it's time for Warzone. Uh, and this week on Warzone, uh, as as with any week of Warzone, a lot happens. And yep. we we start up we start off with a very interesting match. Featuring Juan Chance uh, taking on Sparrow and Whitney Lee. So that's uh, quite the uh, quite the the mix there. You've got uh, a Sentinel, you've got an Omega Club member, and remind me, Pete, who is who is Whitney with these days? Um. I believe he uh, may be going. Oh, uh, may have gone over to. <sighs> my my head is saying Nakama, but that doesn't sound right. Yeah. Whitney is Omega Club. Juan is solo. That's it. That's where I was getting confused. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I knew Omega Club was in there. That's right. Juan uh, turned down the chance to join Omega Club. Right. That's fair. Uh, but All right. yeah. Either way, with this, uh, with this particular matchup um you know this this really is a showcase of the cruisers for for warzone and uh, i think it's also fair all three of these are uh relatively newer members of the warzone roster uh to be in the uh, opening match the uh some of the newer um more cruiser weight i would say uh style members right also, each one in a mask. Mm -hmm. And with uh, Sparrow taking a moment to uh, to draw energy from the crowd, 
allowed the victory to go to Whitney Lee and Omega Club. So with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first match goes to the uh, the Ninja. You know, really that uh, when you think about it, that was that match was a bad joke. Uh, a Ninja, a Luchador, and a superhero walk into a ring. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Superhero sidekick, kind of. Well, I mean, uh, I, I mean, so would you, would it's you, complicated. Would, yeah, I was like, I mean, that's still a superhero. I mean, you could say, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, because I could have been worse. I could have been uh, a, a ninja, a sidekick, and a jobber walk into the ring. But that just seemed true. Funny. Yeah, I, I think it was much. My way was much better. Lucha, superhero, ninja. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Meanwhile, the next match of the uh, of the evening saw Papusa PI teaming up with the Dagger Daggerick, who we just heard from earlier, that one schmuck and our HR rep, the one, the only registered Anon, although apparently he's Still Hawaiian and non, despite wearing the suit, taking on high voltage. Uh, that's and I mean all of them. That's to to my knowledge that is, uh, with the exception of former heavyweight champion Justice Jake, that is every member of high voltage, and only because, well, we'll be hearing from Jake later in the evening. Now. Uh, Pete, what is your take? Uh, I, I, we talk about it a lot. Established teams versus thrown together teams. Yeah. So this one you've got. Sometimes it works. Most of the time, uh, you know, most of the time the, the thrown together team won't work, but it did. It, it's not impossible. It's just highly unlikely. That's true. Well, because here you have Daggerick and Anon. Both have uh, long histories as successful tag team wrestlers, just not with each other. Uh, Papusa and the Schmuck tend to be more singles wrestlers versus High Voltage, who are a absolute cohesive unit. Although these days, we, I, I would think the uh, the thrown together teams are becoming more common, and people should be, I, I suppose, trying to figure out how to work together. But, uh, yeah, not in this case. Well, in Wonderball, you know, so much focus on submission moves, uh, particularly uh, uh, choke, uh, choke submissions. It, you know, I mean, yeah, Wonderball. Hard to, hard to beat that, that, that hold that they have. Yeah, I mean, Wonderball's a choking hazard. Yep. And with that, uh, victory to high voltage. Uh, the next, the next match. I mean, we've been talking about uh, for a long time faction warfare, and lately faction warfare seems to have taken on two completely separate meanings. Uh, one meaning, of course, is the uh, occasional uh, matches that happen between Warzone and Flashbang wrestlers. But overall, it, it was originally a focus on the different war zone factions facing each other. So with that, uh, the next match featured members of the Conquest Bloodline, uh, Feel Good Inc. and Gorm, taking on Power Surge and Depth Charge of Nakama Worldwide. Now, this is uh, completely different from what we were talking earlier. These are not thrown together teams. These are two factions fielding members of their team. Um, I would say Feel Good Inc. and Gorm have the advantage of having teamed more often, whereas Power Surge is teaming with the newest member of Nakama Worldwide in Depth Charge. Which we still don't yeah, know Death's about. Yeah, Death Charge has not uh, has not been in the M and W for that long, much less the the Nakama Worldwide. So. No, I, this may only be Death Charge's fourth, or uh, maybe not even that official match. He he did a few darks. No, no, no. 
but for the most part, he's he's been around, but we haven't seen a lot of him. And we know nothing about him. I mean, we don't even know what the deal with that diving helmet is. Does he need it? Is he an aquatic creature? Is he a huge fan of Bioshock? I mean, there are questions. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, it, it, it can't be that effective with just the, the top, I mean. I mean, you know, that's... A little bit, but it's not going to be airtight. So. I mean, I'll give him this. He's beefy. Oh, he, that boy thick. Yeah, I mean, getting him and... When he and Gorm were in the ring, that became a hoss fight. That was the definition of a hoss yeah. fight. You know? This is it. Makes, this makes you think that, that at some point... Uh, uh, the uh, Revenant want, will want to take him on. Oh, I'm sorry, I said... Mm. Contract. The main man, the Atomic Adonis... Uh, Big Papa Plutonium, the Revenant. Sorry. Yeah, I, I've read the contract there, Gorwheel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, back to this match. Um, I don't remember not to mention him. Um, Feel Good Inc. managing to get the pin on the uh, the latest member of Nakama Worldwide. You know, size, strength, and a big helmet don't do much against a stand, I guess. A stand and a Gorm. That's true. Well, yeah, yeah. I still, I'm always a little fuzzy on the the what exactly the stand abilities are. Um, I, I I hear it can be a little bizarre. A little bit, yeah. Yet somehow incredibly stylish. Oh, well, there's there's that I suppose. Also, um, I I have to bring up the the this call uh, the the. This reference that Trees made, a depth charge and power surge are totally master blaster, and I can't not see it. God damn it. Damn it, Trees. Damn, damn you. I can't unsee it. I can't either. I... No. It's it's welcome to un oh, That's it, why I had to share it. If 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 I don't I gotta suffer knowing that, you do too. Was see now cause he also said welcome to Underdome. Oh, can't we get beyond Underdome? I just uh... See now, now that's gonna haunt our dreams, Trees. It's gonna gonna haunt us. And what's worse, above game, somebody here, somebody maybe commentating on the show might tell Taka <laughs> that reference, and it's going to it's it's going to become canon. I mean, not that not that anything on Firing Line ever becomes canon. We better. Uh, I think we should get back in character. Yeah. Let's get back in character. Moving along, nothing to see here, folks. And uh, yeah, so the next match featured Theron Eldrazi of the Outlaws taking on the Judge of the Multiverse, Raphael Sampson. Uh, Raphael, of course, being uh, accompanied to the ring by his partner, the uh, Battleground Champion Sasquatch Wing. And uh, they're on, as always, accompanied by CGR Killer, the man we learned broke into the, the Luna family house and stole uh, La Luna El Chavo's mask and ran over Punk Master Ghost with a car. Yeah. Uh, I mean, those those are things that happen. Uh, and apparently the brass is still uh, busily investigating who actually hired him because... Uh, CJR in typical um, outlaw fashion is refusing to uh, break client confidentiality. Uh, uh, well, confidentiality match, match, is, a, is a tricky, tricky thing. It is a tricky thing, and it's it's you know uh, there was a time Papusa was working really hard, uh, I, taking on Theron Eldrazi, trying to get the name of an employer. The the outlaws they they take. That part of their work very seriously because oh, a merc who can't keep his mouth shut about who employed him doesn't get work. Nope, at least not for long. Yeah. So, uh, and this man, I mean, you know, great. We, we hadn't. This actually was the first time I want to say in a long time we saw Eldrazi in singles action. Uh, we we've, we've certainly seen uh, many times it, tag action or multi man action. But this is the first time in I don't know how long, maybe, maybe since before last Multivania that we saw Theron in the ring, just by himself. Oh my God! 
So yeah. it has been a while. Yeah. And so a reminder of what a skilled wrestler he is. But again, this is taking on Raphael Sampson. The man is the uh, the judge of the multiverse for a reason. And there's a reason why when you see him, it's all laud he coming. Yep. Word. So, uh, but it was a uh, the definitely one of the harder opponents that the judge has had to deal with. Th that's, as that's true, but uh, he he uh, stands victorious in the ring. Uh, the all uh, the all odds are on a roll. I mean, this win, absolutely. Uh, Squatch winning the the Starship tournament and thus securing the Battleground Championship. Um, I mean, realistically. All eyes are on the all odds at this point. Uh, but with that, uh, uh, if if we're at all curious uh, at this point, ladies and gentlemen, on the phone right now, we have one half of the outlaws. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Theron Eldrazi. You know, I'm going to keep this pretty short and pretty sweet. For two reasons. One, Raph, I hope the singles division was paying attention to this. Because what we did was fired a warning shot not to underestimate the tag division. You took me to a limit I forgot I had, Raphael. And for that, I applaud you. Which leads me to my next point. The announced match for next week in the number one contendership for the Big Oof Championship. If you look at the names on that list of competitors, at least a third to half of them are tag wrestlers. Why? Because the brass in the singles division doesn't think we can hack it. They want to guarantee their single stars get a title shot but i've got one question for you singles division who's watching your back because i can tell you who's watching mine i can tell you who's watching Raphael's, and i can tell you they're not gonna let us down so when it comes down to it we've got a better chance of winning this than you ever will all right well thank you theron eldrazi And with I that, he said he was going to be short. He, I mean, he he said his piece, and then he he said his piece, and then he pieced out. How how much? Yeah, apparently. I mean, okay, I, I want you to, Pete. Okay, think of, think about what we just heard from Theron. Now compare that to when we have Scott on the show. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, pretty short, pretty sweet, pretty to the point. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. Let's move on. Uh, so after that match, okay, so after that match, um, <clears throat> with the recent cash-in of the Money in the Bank by the Citric King to capture the Interdimensional Championship from Earl King West on Flashbang, as per Money in the Bank rules, the money, the, the, the briefcase cannot sit idle for long. I, I don't know if there's a doomsday clock associated with it, that if it's not held by somebody, an Eldritch Horror gets released, because I wouldn't put that past anyone. But it's always the case that as soon as that uh, briefcase is cashed in, uh, within I would say usually within about two weeks, there's a match. And there was a match. But before we get into that, one of the competitors had some musings about the uh that the upcoming match ladies and gentlemen this is your war zone audio promo of the week i'm in the money in the bank again eh well third time's the charm i suppose now what am i going to do after i'm inevitably victorious la 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 why are you annoying me with your presence small child i just got out of the local children's hospital they gave me a free lolly that's nice now be gone from my sight! I'm plotting. Plotting about what, mister? Plotting how I'm going to make all those below me pay for ignoring the sacrifices I made for them. I want to drag them down 
and see them lose all they hold dear, so they will know what it's like to sacrifice everything for a cause and have it be worth nothing as the world and people around you move on as though nothing happened. Gee, mister. That sounds awfully mean. I didn't ask you, small child. You better be careful. If all the rest of us catch on to what you're doing, you'll be the one going to the hospital instead of me. You've given me inspiration, dear child. As a reward for this most brilliant idea, I'm taking this. My lolly! See you this Saturday. <laughs> And after that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, your Money in the Bank match featuring Daverman, Carnival, Glacerius, the man who will steal candy from a child, Sir Unkly Dunk, Bart Ender, and Malice. Then, last but not least... Ozir Turan. I apparently can't count because then there was Kane. Kane, of course, right now a controversial figure, uh, having interfered in the Trios Championship match. Many people saying uh, that it is uh, exclusively because of him that Doom won those belts away from VIP. Um, that, of course, is a, uh, a question up in the air. Since, uh, you know, uh, doubt the Pumpkin King at your peril. But uh, either way, yeah, this match, all of these uh, competitors, but when you look at it, most of them are part of a, a faction or a group. I'd say the exceptions being, of course, Unkly. And I, I would argue right now, I think Glacerius is mostly a, uh, a solo performer. So, uh, but then you've got things like Bart Ender going up and having to face his former tag team partner in Lucha on the Rocks. Uh, I mean, how do you, how do you do that? How do you face your, I mean, if somebody's going to know how to take you on, such as we see here, it's going to be your former tag partner. And then you've got, uh, two of the veterans, Uncle Dunk and Azir Turan fighting each other for the case. Just a, a, a lot of people, a lot of people uh, deciding to deal with grudges over, although that was impressive, Bart Ender in a ladder, let's be honest. Yeah. But you, uh, here you see Unkly is determined. Unkly wants, you know, he, he feels he is the money man. He deserves the money in the bank. And there you have it. Sir Unkly Dunk. Apparently, the inspiration from that that uh, that poor urchin and his lolly allowed uh, Uncle Dunk to not only steal the lollipop, but the the case. So, question: Yeah, is you know as has become the uh, the unfortunate tradition of uh, renaming the money in the bank to something appropriate to the uh, the wrestler. Mm -hmm. Is he literally one of the few exceptions where it would be renamed to the money in the bank? I mean, it could be. I, I, you know, usually it's <clears throat> uh, usually it's the first part, the money part that's renamed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this time it's the bank part that gets... Uh, it's uh it's 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 the money in the offshore account Ooh, mm, mm. savings yeah. account yeah well no 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 that's that's way too above no. board for uncle right 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 uh the money in the trust fund Ooh, that's nice yeah it's it's got some possibilities or um uh, oh money in the ponzi scheme Ooh, money in the pyramid Oh, well, that's a really good one. Yeah. Mm. Uh, oh, I, we're, we're Ooh, getting one. Money in the mattress. I like that. Money in the mattress. We also got money that which bought the the money that bought the bank. Uh, money in the money. I, I, I appreciate that, mm. Mister. Too much money in the bank. Uh, just the bank. Yeah, the bank. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, some some possible. We, those need to be spitballed. We need to we need to come up with one. 
yeah, and yeah. and get it trending. We'll, we'll workshop, workshop it. Yeah, yeah. So with that, uh, oh, hang on a second. I'm Phyllis. Phyllis is telling me there's someone on the phone again. Hello. 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 Yes, can you hear? Yes, caller, can you hear us? Oh, oh, is this the uh, wonderful people at Firing Line? Uh, is this, uh, is this uh, Pete McPherson and Jerry Aldini? Yes. Yeah. I just want to say, I love your show. You're amazing. But uh, why don't you cover the real fun stuff? You know, like, like the ass kicking that's about to happen. The... Well, I mean, we've got several ass kickings still on the the docket for tonight. Which, which, which ass kicking were you talking about? Yes. Fair enough. Uh, by the way, I just want to point out, I I remember the contract. I I said all the words. All right. Thank you very much. Your payment will be in the mail. Right. Right. And, and, and do you want that address to your checking savings or your overseas account? I, I wait. What do I, I have an overseas account? You mean to tell me my secretary didn't tell you? Um, I tell you what. Can you send me some paperwork on that uh, while that goes into my? You know what? Let's 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 workshop this offline. Uh, thank you very much for, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one of Burnout's Roughnecks, uh, the Toxic Wastelander, Gorewheel. Uh, yeah. Thank you for having me. You're all amazing. Go out of hell, Sparky Cheeks. Right. Thank you. And with that, let's uh, let's go on. So uh, I think he was a little early on the ass kicking because the next one we're talking about. Well, I mean, it. I guess it was an ass kicking. It uh, was Trashman Jones, the Warpgate Hardcore Champion, taking on his former faction mate, Suplex Sam, and now a member of VIP. Uh, and this is a title match. This is for the Warpgate Hardcore Championship. Uh, Trashman decided to give Sam a shot. And uh, Sam, Sam did. Go ahead. Do a good job. I mean, I would give Sam his problem. Well, here's the thing you've got to remember. Suplex Sam has been in M&W for a long time in a lot of incarnations. You know, uh, he and the rest of Shoot Nation started as bounty hunters for the Inquisition before moving over to Friday Night Flashbang and participating in Flashbang's first ever tag team match. Now, yes, they lost that match, but uh, they still participated and were a strong tag team. Oh, that was a brutal chair shot, by the way, uh, for quite a while before moving back to Warzone and uh, joining Nakamura Worldwide until Trashman Jones uh, released them, from what I can tell, largely on a whim. This is looking horrendous right now. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't remember. There, there was never a, other than, oh, they're out of, of Nakamura Worldwide. There was never a lot of explanation, but that's Trashman. Um. But then uh, Suplex went on to, I mean, one could argue bigger and better things. Uh, you know, he went on to a, a group who's actually held gold as a team. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but anyway, and and, he, and if nothing else, he got to put Trashman through a table. I mean, that that's... It's always a good thing. Always, always, always you know, day. I think that's a lot of people have said it's, it's well worth it. Uh, but uh, Trashman... You know, he's held on to that Warpgate Hardcore Championship for a long time for a reason, and that is, uh, I I really defy you to find a wrestler who has less concern about the well-being of his opponents than uh, than Trashman Jones. But also well, less at the same time himself, yeah, uh, to I, a degree, I, I agree, I was gonna say, I'd say. I was going to say also, yeah, no real regard for his own body or the arena or... I mean, really, the hardcore division is the perfect place for Jones because rules to him are more guidelines. And he does manage and by guidelines. They're those scribbly things on a on a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. his yeah. Here is your winner, 
So uh, there it is. Trashman Jones manages to hold on to the Warpgate Hardcore Belt yet again. I I'm one of these days. I'm I'm you know when he finally falls, and ladies and gentlemen, he will fall. It's inevitable. Uh, I just hope he remembers that what brought him here and that he can recognize the consequences of his own actions. I'm sorry. I thought I could sell that. <laughs> Trash man. Yeah. Understanding the consequences of his own actions. <laughs> you, you got, you got a good ways through. I did. I thought, I thought I could do it. I thought I could make it all the way through, but <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, let's go on to uh, the next match. Um, Oh, and this one, now this was interesting because, as as mentioned by our uh, earlier call-in, it, the hell, hang on a second, something got oh. me, that was the, not that one, that got mapped to the wrong button, that's okay, it's the glorious emperor, Probunaga, uh, uh, take, joining Eastern Block Party to create the glorious Block Party, to take on Burnout's Roughnecks. That's right, the heavyweight champion and his teammates, the Toxic Wastelanders, Gorwheel, and the main man, the Atomic Atonis, Big Papa Plutonium, the Revenant. I, one of these days, he's going to add another. He's going to add another nickname, and there's going to be an amendment. To the Wasn't contract. there something regarding the ex-wives? Uh, so far, uh. uh so far, unless it's Elsa, don't bring them up. Gotcha. No, that's that's my, uh, 69. That I, I, I remember we can mention 69. That's about it. Nice. Other than that, there's there's a and it's not so much a restraining order as we really would you rather we we'd really you rather you didn't. And when it's the right. toxic wastelanders, that seems to almost have as much weight as legality. But uh, yeah, this this was a uh, now this matchup. I mean, you talk earlier about uh, throw together tag teams. Uh, this doesn't have that feel because Eastern Block Party are a strong team and they've worked oh with Probanaga before. Well, that was and at this point, the uh, Roughnecks are an established team. They've worked together several times, uh, and they I, I think oh, they go. are united in a uh, as, as we were discussing earlier. A total disregard of the the safety of their opponents, but more importantly, just a love of destruction. You know, just a you know what we just want to break things, and uh, I, no one breaks things better than the main man. Well, uh, you know what they say: some people do just want to watch the world burn. Yeah, although I will say that the uh, very close second is is Gorewheel, um, which is interesting because he usually then files the uh, the damage claims for the people who things got destroyed. He's really, really adept at playing both sides of the field. Um, uh, I mean, you know, and, if he's in, in law, that's... Yeah. And then, of course, you've got Locken, that uh, fine example of of uh, German genetic engineering. Why they decided to genetically engineer a comedian, we may never know. But Gorwheel uh, taking, uh, taking down Obanaga... And uh, a lot of people have pointed out the history between Probanaga and Burnout during this match. That you know they they had faced each other for the uh, the belt in, in Burnout's first reign, which uh, in a um, you know uh, uh, an interesting situation. Way, but uh, yeah, no matter what way you look at it, uh, a decent match, and I think uh, portent of of things to come. I look forward to seeing uh, seeing what happens. Still no way. We we checked those buttons earlier. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to look into that later. Anyway, let's move on to our next. So the next match. So speaking of uh, matches and, and title shots, the next match was a Big Oof title match featuring Rapture New Road versus the Big Oof champion Mega Blitz X. So you have the uh, mentor of Dungeons and Destiny, the uh, the man who uh, uh, owns Enraptured Beauty, taking on 
the uh, the henshin hero of Warzone, Mega Blitz X. And uh, the, my first thought is, don't dab on a common Raider. Because that just no. upsets them. And it doesn't end well. Um, although both of these men, I mean, Rapture, of course, has always been a bit of a flyer. Uh, uh, had a, a touch of the cruiser in him. Uh, but uh, Mega Blitz being one of the most well-respected cruiser rates on the either roster. And... Since he uh, uh, embraced his Takahatsu heritage, uh, has just elevated his game to a whole new level. Sit out, Bulldog, calling for it, but will it work this time? He's busting up and Ryder. And there's the Ryder kick for the second uh, attempted the second time, and that one hit. But Mega Blitz gonna fly. Mega flare! And once the Mega Flare hits, really that's. Pretty much all she wrote. And ladies and gentlemen, three count and still your big oof champion, Mega Blitz X. And retaining. Yep, he's uh, right now this is turning out to be a great run. Uh, honestly, it feels like uh, Mega Blitz has uh, actually had even more energy of late ever since facing Brawl Kaiser. Uh, it's, it's, it's true. It's as if the the combining of their their Takahatsu energy that uh, that uh, they both seem to have common uh, origins, as it were, uh, left him feeling feeling more invigorated than he has in a long time, and ready to to defend that belt from all comers. Yep. So, uh, yeah, moving on. The next match is a fatal five-way. And this is... Uh, now, this... There was uh, there was some... Uh, this was a title match, though, I believe. Correct? This was for the Nexus? Uh, uh, yes, I believe Because yeah, there's so, the Nexus yep. Titan champion. Uh, yep. So, this is interesting because we have... Of course, the Beef, former Big Oof champion, the former Warp Gate hardcore champion, and, and Jungos, uh, Louis McDonald, who's held the uh, the Nexus Titan itself, and of course, former Big Oof champion Maximilian Thunderthighs. So, what you have here is a uh, a collection of former champions going after the second most prestigious belt on Warzone. Uh, in this, it, it, and how they broke it down to their dance partners, you have the Tiefling taking on the Orc, and the um, the Egotist taking on the the Man for the Children. In the meantime, Beef taking his shot at Fear Strikes. Well, and, you know, you'd see various pairings up happen, but one that you see saw a lot was Max and Louie. And for some reason, their their brawl seemed to uh, start heading more towards the ramp than others. Well, and it makes me wonder how, what was leading that. And, and was Louie just wanting to isolate Max from everyone else, or... Was Max trying to keep Louis away from the prize? Uh, because let's face it, Louis is. He started getting so many of his title shots because of his deal making with the Inquisition. You know, betraying. But his we see now that backfiring. Yeah. Fear goes in for the pin, and it's just too far away for anybody to get to. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And there you have it. And with that, Fear Strikes managing to uh, hold on to his belt and maintain his reign as the Nexus Titan Champion. Uh, I'm also hearing apparently Jungos did also hold the Nexus belt at uh, uh, at one point. And uh, also uh, to uh, the Omni Geek, I knew somebody was going to catch that. I'm glad it was you. 
And but yeah, so uh, uh, title retention common theme tonight. Yeah, well, very much so on the on the Warzone side, side. Absolutely. Oh, hey, we've got a. Hang on, I'm getting a note. We got a caller. Hello, caller. You're on firing line. Uh, hello there. How you doing there? Hi. Uh, can we have your name, please? Uh, hi. I uh, I'm supposed to keep my name anonymous because he calls me the great editor, but uh, I'm the editor for uh, Mr. Thunder Thighs's promos. Oh, all right, sir. Um, uh, unfortunately, Max is a little, I wouldn't say mad. He, okay, yeah, he's mad uh, over last week's event. Really? So uh, I've come well, to step step in. I've got I've got a letter from him. I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly read this, but I'll I'll do you do you have something to to ask? Because I can pass it along to him. Uh, well, let's hear the statement first, then we'll go ahead and ask the question. Uh, one second. Okay. Uh, uh, there we go. And I quote. Uh, Legion sucks. Uh, Louis McDonald is a big, dumb doo-doo head who stuck a quarter onto the ground and told me it was a great distraction. And I quote, it was not a great distraction. Um, you are going to get yours. So says the great behemoth Maximilian Thunderthighs. All right. So... Um... I guess that answers our question. We were trying to uh, ascertain which of the two of them was bringing the fight up the ramp. It sounds like it was Louie. Yeah, it, from what I from what I heard and what I saw in the match, uh, he basically whispered in his ear and said, "Like, hey, there's something really cool over here, and I think you need, you and I need to go see it." And then he brought him over there, and then he just started beating him up. And that, that that's kind of rude, in in my personal opinion. But I mean, again, I'm just the I'm just the mic guy. I don't know. That, that what there. All right. Well, you know, we we have that. I mean, Wilson's got his newsletter guy. Uh, you know, we we've, we've got Joe. Uh, there's. I, I met. I went. I met. I met that Bill of Airs guy. He's he's a bit of an odd one, but. Um, yeah. I, I also. Oh, sorry. I'm getting a text from. I'm actually getting a text from. Oh my god, he can text. Anyways, uh, it says, uh, also, side note, Mr. Gore Wheel, um, I think he's making the noise for, like, when you do a raspberry. So, um, to Gore Wheel is what he's saying. Uh, in addition is, go fight for your belt. I'm going for the Nexus Titan. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Editor, and uh, give our best to Max. I will. Can you tell him what the eggplant emoji is? I, I don't think he's ever going to figure out the emoji. He let alone just figured out all, uh, the texting. It's all thumbs. Fair enough. Anyways, all right. uh, have yourselves a good night, everybody. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Um, yeah. Okay, well, hey. You know, those promos make a lot more sense knowing he's got a professional editor. Yeah. So, hey, let's go ahead and move on. So, the uh, the next match was a four-way tag team match featuring the Absolute uh, Units, uh, McMorgan and uh, Ginger Boy, the UK Spitfires, Los Belbros, all there to take on the reigning Unified Tag Champions, Chained Hell. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is a title match. And this, yep. I mean, there's a, a, again, when you get something like this, you get a lot of people involved. It's, uh, questions always ask, like, who's people's favorites? We were discussing that with the earlier tag match from Flashbang. And now here. Uh, the nostalgic favorite uh, from online and in the various watch parties seem to be actually the absolute units. Uh, I would have thought it would have been Los Belbros, but a lot of people were were definitely wanting to see the uh, Absolute Units get another run with the belts. Um, the uh, I mean, the Los Belbros are always going to have the the uh, the support of people who are longtime MW fans and seen their vast histories. And then the UK Spitfires. I mean, they've got their fans, but there's. It, it's pointed out there's a you know some people are just never going to get again uh, be able to get over ginger prejudice. 
And of course, this being a elimination match, the the um, math changes. And at this point, you had chained hell overwhelming Los Belbros, and it comes down to a two on one match with Flame Revenant and, and High Tower. Much over. Yeah, against Fly, and that's that's it. At that point, it's like you know, good job, everyone, but chained hell retains. What are you going to do? Yep. And, uh, you know, they have been a, a long-standing tag team. They've held on long. I mean, they're not, not Bone Warriors link title reigns yet. But but a respectable title reign for uh, Warzone. Well, and these are, as a tag team, relatively new in terms of tag teams. They're, mm -hmm. they're you know, obviously they, they've, they've put in the time to get to where they're at, but... They are not one of the older tag teams in this. That's that's uh, that's true. That's true. I mean, obviously that goes to the Bell Bros. But with that, um, now the next match also a title offense. The I mean, and this is technically true. The newest title on Warzone, Citric King winning the Interdimensional Championship uh, from Earl King West on Flashbang and bringing it to Warzone after a title de defense against the Bulldog Grant Martin. But uh, Citric King's first opponent, well, let's remember the the most important stipulation of the interdimensional belt. And that is that the holder of the interdimensional belt will be the first line of defense against um, invaders from other multiverses. And it turns yep. out uh, one such invader came, and it's one that if you had been watching Flashbang in the past, you'd seen before. It was from the multiverse of Doom, the Marauder. Taking on, taking on the juicy one himself, Citric King. Although, after his behavior on Flashbang, a lot of people think he might be a rotten orange. Well, uh, to say he, he he certainly seemed nonplussed coming into this match. So, I mean, as nonplussed as I mean, as gets. as produce gets, yeah, yeah. Um, the the Marauder, of course, showing a a great love of using his horns as weapons. Yep. And um, you know, it's it's interesting that there were a few people either because of the Marauder's notoriety. Or because they weren't that, there were actually people rooting for the Marauder. Um, you know, Citric left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. That's probably pulp. That's that's why you go with Sunny D, pulp free stuff. But uh, you know, a great, however, great performance by the uh, the juicy one. You know, out there taking on this uh, this uh, legendary behemoth, this legendary demon. Of a uh, 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 the world of doom. Um, it's hell. It, 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 it's hell. I mean, it's hell. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's from hell. He's from hell. And and I hear and I hear nothing is more hellish than the Marauder on karaoke night. Yeah. And he knows. But it then too. we saw it. this. This was something unusual, as we actually saw. The, uh, the submission move taking out the Marauder from Citric King. That was interesting. It, 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 I'd heard something about maybe juice in his eyes as well. Maybe. You know, I, I, there, there might have been more. And, uh, and, and Citric King also just seeming like, you know, who dares uh, uh, come after my first singles title? That's, that's the other important thing. This is the first singles belt that Citra King has ever held, and it was his first chance to defend it on his home show of Warzone. Yep. So. Well, that leads us to our final match of the night, and this was a six-man uh, match to determine who was going to be the number one contender to face Burnout Vaughn for the World Heavyweight Championship. And those contenders, well, his former faction mate, D4C Trice, the modern and then uh, Sam Jax, leader of the Conquest Sam Bloodline, Jax. 
the uh, VIP member Wilson, son of Will. Work rate yeah, Wilson. Work, work, work rate Wilson, Alpha Kong of Omega Club, the Zacco Duo of the Main Event Max.exe, and former heavyweight champ Justice Jake of High Voltage. As we said, there's a reason Jake wasn't in that earlier Voltage match. He uh, was looking for a chance to uh, reclaim his glory. So, in this matchup, you have one former champion. You have uh, a former uh, uh, compatriot of Vaughn's. Uh, you've got Zacco Duo, who's just been a problem for everyone. Uh, Conquest Bloodline, who've been earning their way up the ranks the hard way. <sighs> You know, uh, well, let's let's talk about Alpha Kong, another uh, former uh, faction mate of Burnout Vaughn. So two people who know him very well, and then you know we are contractually obligated. Ladies and gentlemen, him. wait for it. Ding. There you go. I was just gonna say we are contractually obligated to point out that uh, Wilson, son of a whale, work rate work rate Wilson was in fact in this match. Hmm. Apparently he got over, you know, we got those, you know, he, he was drunk, he was drunk calling us quite a bit. And uh, was he got over it. Yeah, he, 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 you he could got, even say it was unprettier. He, he got out of the hooch and he, uh, he got back into the ring. Uh, let's see if we're also getting a text from uh, Lady Catherine. I will admit, Jerry, I wanted the, the giant demon to win. At least the demon was honest about what it was. Not many believe in honesty. All right. Oh, so I find it interesting. You've got uh, Zach O'Doul and uh, Wilson, two people who, who, yeah, they have a particular area they like to target. And at least for once, Wilson got to, uh, to experience that feeling on the receiving end. Bob Johnson. Yeah. But here you have the, uh, you know, and there it is. A uh, Jake gets tapped out by D4C Trice. So the person who will get the shot at Burnout Vaughn's heavyweight championship is going to be the former leader of Omega Club, the current member of Legion, D4C Trice. And, and this was one that left a lot of people... I mean, a lot of people actually wanted to see this matchup. They want to see Vaughn take on his former faction mate just because of how well both wrestlers know each other. With it that, will be uh, the sight to see. It will be interesting. Well, with that, it's uh, we are uh, coming to the end. That was the main event on Warzone, so it's, of course, time for the Warzone moment of the week. There's a little wrestler on the roster though. <laughs> Introducing Man, man, to the 
Wildcats. So since they're running off of their title, the Mollyverse will be attacked by invaders like this. Oh my God. There's a belt. So that's your moment of the week, but it was a week. We had earlier a flashbang moment where we went, the fuck? Well, now it's Warzone's turn. Yes. Grabbed by the man killer malice. Oh, God. Grabbed by the man killer malice. Oh, God. Get him on the goal! And there we go. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to a close uh, for another MW firing line. Uh, we will see you here next week at our regular time of 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. For Pete McPherson, I'm Jerry Aldini. Good night, everyone. Oh, and we're uh, we're above game. Hey, you know what? Hey, we it's nine. We, we, yeah, no, we we managed to end. Uh, well, we had at our normal time. We had advantages because somebody else had to start late this week, and so it's mm. shortened their show. Isn't that right, Mister Edward Bosco? Wow, so rude. <laughs> no, I was giving you, dude. I was trying to give you a compliment. Oh, I'm not going to take those. I know, I know. It's, it's. I, I, I remembered. Oh wait, I got to let him know this is a compliment. He's not. He doesn't have experience. Yeah, I'm, I will fight you. That's that's mm -hmm. true. So, how are you guys? Good show. Thanks. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm doing all right. I, I'm glad we made the decision to push it back because I. What happened? I had a doctor's appointment. Simple as that. Mm. And and. It was one of those, I, I was like, and I did, I actually got home where if we had pushed it, we could have started on time, but we, the decision was, or we could push it back and not have any anxiety. Yeah. So, and I just decided, oh, it's going to be World of Poodles. Why? Because every freaking year, the WWE has to postpone for that damn dog show. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I like hard pan, hard look to the camera. Yeah. But hey, you know, thanks for the, the compliment on the good show. Always appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I was just saying this this week, the, I mean, fi uh, Flashbang was easier because you, you had the same number of matches. You just cut down mm -hmm. the promos. But you were mentioning behind the scenes because you actually chatted with us earlier about what you're, why you didn't do as many promos this week. Uh, yeah. When people cut promos as their characters, I have less of a need to do it for them. Yeah, I mean, and I'd much rather you talk sense. for your character or you write something for somebody to record than you know me do it for you during the matches or during a promo section. Yeah, I mean we've been having some great promos lately. It's just yeah, if you guys are gonna keep cutting great promos, I don't need to do as many, and I will. It I can also play them while matches are loading, so it it shrinks the actual time of the show. Which anytime I can make the show shorter, I'm gonna try to do that. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's good stuff, and we've been. I mean, I, I do them occasionally. Um, uh, Tim's started doing them. Uh, and, of course, we've got Canada. Between Canada, Travis, and uh, Jay Frost. Who am I missing? Joe. Joe. Joe's been doing great. Yeah, Joe's been yeah. doing good work. Uh, I mean, we've got a whole crew. If, if you're part of our community and you've got a character and you want to have a, um, uh, a promo, We've got people you can uh, reach out to if you're not comfortable recording mm -hmm. yourself. Also, thank you to Actual Human Will for the five month resub. We hope you're all having a good night. We are, we are Will. Thanks. Speaking we were, of somebody, but then you showed up. Yeah, I, I was going to say. Speaking of somebody who does good promo work. Uh no, actually, well, Travis and, uh, does good promo work. Actually, using that to segue into something. Yeah. We we do actually have something related to promos coming up here in the near future, don't we? We do. So. Uh, on the MNW YouTube channel on May 9th, that is a Sunday, uh, at, uh, did we, I'm, I'm blanking, did we say 4 or 5 p.m.? I think we said 5 p.m. I got to check with off key. Uh, the... Anyway, while we're checking on the exact time, in the evening yeah. on the 9th, we are going to be doing another uh, workshop stream on the YouTube channel. Uh, it is going to be promo based, but this one is going to focus on 
uh, develop helping people develop their dynamics of being either a face or a heel. Uh, one of the areas that we'd like people to have a little bit more um, uh, work on is uh, make, oh, Rosso, May 9th, 5 p.m. PSC. Thanks, Rosso. I knew somebody had it. Um, just ah, uh, leave well, it to the robot um, to have the index. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we're going to have several of the promo teachers. Uh, Bosco, one of us was supposed to reach out to you. Did anyone ever? <laughs> nope. All right. So, uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, we, we wanted to invite you as one of the promo guys, if you're available. I, yeah. I mean, I haven't done one in a while, but I'm happy to help. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so real quick though, a uh, little bit of a development. Uh, uh, I might not be there for all of that one myself. Mm -hmm. Um, Sunday, May 9th, uh, Hey, uh, let everybody know, uh, Sunday, May 9th will be my two year anniversary of quitting nicotine. Oh. Hey, so uh dude. i may well, be doing a stream uh so i may not make it for everything but that's fair yeah. i mean hey good job always always good to celebrate those anniversaries um yeah, yeah the off key is going to be the one running the stream that day so and if you have questions you'd like to ask ahead of time if you go to firing line submissions uh we have a google doc that off key lime has created where you can put your questions in ahead of time Mm -hmm. uh, if you can't make the stream and you want to get your questions answered when you watch the video later, we can do that. Um, but we, yeah, we're basically we just want to cover what we mean when we say face or heel and what goes into a good face or a good heel promo. So that'll be the focus. Um, and yeah, so and on that, um, so Bosco, what else, what it's uh, have you got had going on? You uh, with, with work, all with, the stuff I work on, I can't talk about of for six months to a year. So, sure. what about uh, anything interesting on the flashbang front? You want to? Oh, tease? yeah. So, to answer Deluna's bit drop, which you can read out, yes, your match with Jack will be tomorrow. So, Deluna's fighting Jack the Questionable in a grudge match. Right. Uh, we've got Electro Reality mm -hmm. going against the Bone Warriors for the tag belts, probably the main event because belts. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we'll see how everything... We know that Macabre is now fighting controller yep. with Mad Jack and ringside. So, yeah. Cool stuff. Um, other than that... The uh, the link I just put into chat, that is the form for the questions. Uh, you can also find that form in Firing Line General. Yep. Um, Matrix is saying, I heard there will be an announcement from a returning superstar. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, Slowly nods. Sure. Yeah. Bacon. Okay. Expression. Yeah. Totally. Yes. Have some. Okay. Actually, right yeah. now, guys, now because we're out of character, if anyone's got any questions, now's a great time. That's true. Yeah. I'm also not making you guys run because I know you normally end right around nine. We normally end. I mean, we start a little late, so I'm I'm okay going a little long. But you know, so oh yeah, because you started I, at seven, so you technically only be going two hours. That's why I'm like, you ran it right on time. Well done. Oh uh, yeah, no, yeah, we, yeah. We, the the show down. was pretty tight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, Carla, we're uh, we're good on the 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 stats. Yeah, no the the book's been doing its job, Carla. We've we've had everything we've needed lately to work with uh i do appreciate how quick you are on updating the uh the log of who's won a showcase match since we're now really working at making a uh, number of showcase victories a thing uh, uh yes roso uh if anybody yeah. uh go take a look uh the community is doing a fundraiser for a, a good member of the community draco uh, Draco, and uh, the, go to that GoFundMe page. Uh, just tried to uh, raise some money for them, help them uh, with their living situation. Yep. Nice. Um, yeah, no, I, honestly, I, unless people have questions, I really can't think of anything else tonight. I mean, I'm not going to keep you here longer than you need to. No, I'm just, like I said. I mean, uh, I'm still going to, I'm going to be up for like another three hours because of a certain finale that's airing tonight that's airing at midnight west coast yeah and no, i have to watch that when i get up in the morning fortunately i have a job where i can actually have like that playing while i'm working the advantages of working from home indeed 
I mean, it's one of the many advantages. It, it, it really is. My commute's great. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. My by, commute, uh, like, is I, there anybody I, on the stairs? I have uh, I have a announcement that's unrelated to anybody except for my uh, my best friend from like fourth grade. Uh, he is apparently uh, going to be having a kid. Hmm. Yeah, just hey, message message me man. last well night done. and to, just message me last night saying uh, he, they're having a kid. So well, I'm happy for him. That's nice. I mean, Travis was. They recently found out the uh, they announced the gender of their child and uh, they reported no oh. casualties. Huh? <laughs> they reported no casualties. So that was, you know, that was that was nice. Um, and yeah, no, yeah, no. It's uh, the only thing I would say is uh, I've been having some discussions with a lot of the community in firing line uh, in flashbang firing line flashbang spoilers, just because we're we're having a lot of those discussions on how you move your character in the right. Uh, heal or face alignment and that's part of what i mean we've been talking about doing this for a while but there's there seems to be a lot more discussion around it so it seems like a good time to do it and i know boss I mean, you, you, you think you, it's just in general uh, general misconceptions of what roles are in wrestling i guess so here's what you have to keep just, in mind mm -hmm. you, you, this is just a note in general Mm -hmm. Play the character that you're being portrayed as. Don't try to go against what you're being booked as. It's much easier right. to go out of character and talk to somebody about, hey, I don't like my creative direction, which I can't believe I'm saying that because this is fictional online wrestling. But if you cut promos and do stuff on firing line that is contrary or slightly, even slightly contrary to what you're being booked as, nobody's going to buy into what anybody else is doing. Like, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what you do. It's just not going to work. All right. So just keep that in mind. Sure. Actually, we do have a question now from Lasume. Yeah. Uh, if you want to create a theme for a faction, how do you go about it? I'm assuming you, are you, you theme, talking you mean like music. A, so X, yeah, Y, are like, you talking an entrance theme or are you talking a visual theme for a faction? I, I, I got yeah, the, so. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I was kind of get the impression he was talking about like, how do you, <laughs> thematically like the are they a face or a heel faction yeah lasumi could you define what you're could you could you better define what you mean by yeah theme? like you mean like how do, how do you create a logo how do you create a wrestling theme how do you create a titan tron how do you create insert thing here also i saw that you got a new microphone congratulations i can't wait to hear it Kiki, say, you've always checked with me before you post a promo, so I appreciate that. I will say, uh, while we're yeah. waiting for the def definition from Lasume, visual. Visual theme. Okay. Got it. Uh, so give me an MP4. If you're trying to create a movie that's going to play, like if you want to make something for the guild, like if you and Curator and Zach all sit down and make something, send me the MP4. The easiest way to do that, if you have a Google account, put it on Google Drive and send it to me. I can then convert it into a file that the game will recognize. If you already know how to do that conversion, awesome. I know Phil did it for me. I am assuming you don't know how to do that, so just sending me an MP4 is all I need. Awesome. Yeah. No, the thing I was going to say before was uh, getting Marauder on yes. Warzone was great because people who hadn't seen the Flashbang episode, there were people losing their damn mind. There's that 100% uh, was the reason why I did it. And I want to do more because I have stuff that even Flashbang guys haven't seen, and yeah. I want to use. I want to use it. Cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, so guys, uh, I I'd, I'd say right now, last call for questions. Yeah, <clears> last call for questions. We're going to rate somebody. Hey, who don't are we worry, we are going around, to be addressing more around. later. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just talking about rating people. Oh, I was just saying that you know you, we're literally we're prefacing. We're doing the, these questions in preparation for a question session. So, if you're, you know, you think of something, don't worry. We're, we're we'll we'll get to it then. Yeah, but I think yeah, I think we're ready for for wrap up. So real quick, first the of course the shilling time. Uh, Tim, got what do you what do you got? Um, Tuesdays. Tuesdays, 12 Eastern, uh, although I am looking to maybe do it earlier, so maybe say 11 p.m. maybe, i mm. um, doing a playthrough of Zeno Gears, uh, twitch.tv slash Storyteller's Apprentice. Wasn't there a game coming out this week? Or... 
Yes. Uh, well, tonight, kind of, I, unless they're doing it in the morning, which they have done before. Uh, the uh, remaster of the prequel to Near Automata, uh, Near Replicant, is going to be coming out tomorrow, maybe tonight. All right. Cool. Bosco, what do you? Anything you want to show? Uh, Flashbang tomorrow. Tune in. Don't miss it. Usual time. Usual time as of right now. Yes, there shouldn't be any anything. We'll see. We'll see if I have a shot in my arm tomorrow. Because if so, then I'm gonna have to power through that. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, first um, or second. All right. And uh, first, first, if I get it. Sure. Sure. Ah. <clears throat> and here at twitch.tv forward slash doctor underscore Caliban. That's dr underscore Caliban. Uh, Monday, we will be continuing our playthrough of Evil Genius 2 World Domination. We are playing Red Ivan because I just love having Brian Blessed's fake Russian accent. I loved it. We were playing on Muddy Rosso was in there. It says, this guy sounds a lot like Brian Blessed doing a Russian accent. And Tim was like, funny you should, funny you that, should mention that. <laughs> funny thing about that. Yeah. Uh, Wednesdays, uh, Flag and Dragons, The Crew That Is True, where I do co-op games with Strike Hellers Apprentice, Donkey Kang, and Corporal Canada. A uh, little up in the air what we're going to be playing this next week. Uh, Canada had to dip out last week, so th we might do the tabletop game he's been wanting to do. We'll see. And then, of course, right back here next Thursday at the normal time of 6 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. Eastern for MNW Farming Line, your guide to multiverse Nexus Wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the Multiverse Nexus Wrestling YouTube channel. If you like this video, go ahead and drop a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel for more, and ring that bell to get notified whenever we post a new video. This has been Joe, signing out.